For almost four years, a small Wiltshire market town of Wooden Bassett has paused to remember the servicemen and women killed in Afghanistan. But now, military repatriations, as they're called, will be shifted to RAF Bryce Norton instead. And a special service is being held to mark the end of what's become a Wooden Bassett tradition. It comes as the latest soldier to be killed in Afghanistan has been named. He was Sergeant Barry Weston from 4-2 Commando Royal Marines, killed whilst on foot patrol in Helmand province yesterday. Let's go live now to Wooden Bassett and John Kay, who's there. John. Well, George, when Sergeant Barry Weston's body is flown home next week, it won't come into RAF Lynham just up the road from here. It will, as you say, go into RAF Bryce Norton in Oxfordshire, which means it won't come through the high street here in Wooten Bassett. This town's role in repatriations is coming to an end. So tonight, as the sun sets at two minutes to eight, there will be a special ceremony here, this time not involving a cortege or coffins, but focused instead on a flag. The flag has flown every time. In all weathers, all seasons, all times of day and night. Nearly 400 military coffins have passed through Wooden Bassett. But with repatriation flights now returning to RAF Bryce Norton, this town's duty is done. It's an end of an era for Wooten Bassett. You know, it is going to be a very emotional time. It's very sad, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, things move on and it is time for RAF Bryce Norton to take over. Tonight, in one final act of respect, the town's flag will be lowered and blessed on the altar of the parish church. Local people keen to mark the end of their role in a quiet and dignified manner. Yeah, we've done a good job and people are thankful to us. And I, I don't think that that is foolish pride and I don't think it's a lack of humility. I think that it's appropriate to, to say, well done. 30 miles away, this is the new Wooden Bassett, a purpose-built garden on a ring road next to RAF Bryce Norton, where bereaved families will now gather. Some local people feel it lacks the authenticity of the Wiltshire market town, but they're determined to continue the tradition, and Wooden Bassett's top brass have been keen to help and advise. I wish them luck up in Oxfordshire. I'm sure they'll do just as good a job as we will and uh, God help them if they don't. So after four years, life in this sleepy town can finally get back to normal. People here will never forget the role they have played, but most of all, they say, they will never forget the fallen. Well, what started where I'm standing right now as a small impromptu gathering became, of course, a mass event seen all over the world. But there will be one more ceremony here in October, a royal visit, when this place becomes officially royal Wooden Bassett. Earlier this evening, the people of Wooden Bassett marked the end of the town's role in honouring the British servicemen and women who lost their lives overseas. From tomorrow, repatriation flights will be arriving at RAF Bryce Norton in Oxfordshire. The vicar said that uh, the town was proud to have earned the title of Royal Wooden Bassett because of the events of the past four years, as John Kay reports. They gathered on the high street in their thousands, just as they have so many times before. But this ceremony would be different. No coffins, no grieving families. This was Wooden Bassett marking the end of its own achievements. Wooden Bassett itself saying... Goodbye. I think if anyone who sold boxes of Kleenex, they'd make a fortune here tonight because uh, we will, we'll all feel it. We just started with a handful of people and it ended up with hundreds and um, everybody sort of wants to come and you know, sort of pay respect to us now to say thank you for what we've done. As the sun set, Wooden Bassett's Union flag was lowered one final time. What started as a small, impromptu gathering four years ago, now ending with a large and formal farewell. During that time, the flag has flown in all weathers, 
all seasons, at all times of day and night. Nearly 400 military coffins have passed through Wooden Bassett. But now this town's duty is done. Tomorrow, in a symbolic handover, the flag will be brought here. This purpose-built garden on a ring road is where bereaved families will gather now that repatriations are returning to RAF Bryce Norton. Some local people feel this place lacks the authenticity of Wooden Bassett. And in the crowd tonight, many regretted the move. It's just not going to be the same. It's kind of, I don't know how I feel, just a bit, bit mixed up. We've watched a lot of repatriations and yeah, we just think yeah. it's just so sad that it will never come this way again. Good evening. The town of Wooden Bassett is standing easy tonight after four years on duty saluting the fallen. As the sun set in a glow of orange and red, the Union flag was lowered for the last time, marking the end of repatriations through the town, which has become a symbol of decency and dignity. Tonight, images of the ceremony have been flashed around the country, as we've seen, but now Wooden Bassett will bow out of the limelight. Will Glennon reports. As the sun set over this small Wiltshire town, so more than four years of duty came to a close. The people of Wooden Bassett and far beyond packed into the streets as they have done 167 times before, proud to mark the end of the military repatriations here. This marks the end of Wooden Bassett's involvement in the repatriation of fallen service personnel. Brave young men and women who are given what is often described as the last full measure of devotion. Bearers, carry standards. It was a simple ceremony. The flag next to the war memorial that flies at half-mast when the bodies go by was lowered for the last time. Then a minute's silence to remember the hundreds killed in combat who have passed through here. It was a fitting end for a town that has shown immense pride, respect and dignity. The fact that all this has come from the townspeople themselves has won admiration across the world. Well, it was, uh, it was really good. Um, needed something to mark the occasion. Um, it's Very moving. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I thought it was absolutely excellent. It just shows what the people of Wooden Bassett uh, think about the repatriations and what the soldiers have done for us. Uh, I'm just sad to see it go from Wooden Bassett, to be honest. Uh, I'm glad that what we've done um, is actually shown everybody what's going on in Afghanistan and the lives that have been lost. And hopefully it's given comfort to the families and having just spoken to one of the Royal Marines, um, he said it's also giving uh, comfort to the troops and that knowing there are people back home that do care. The flag will be presented tomorrow to the Oxfordshire town of Carterton. It's where future repatriations will pass. Images that have been seen the world over, ensuring the name Wooden Bassett will resound through military history. The ceremonies grew from humble beginnings. Spontaneity was the key, according to Wiltshire war historian Peter Caddick Adams. The two world wars, most of the other conflicts we've been involved in since, uh, were all about the way the government dictated that the dead were commemorated and buried. Wooten Bassett is a public ownership of grief, taking that commemoration out of government hands. Wooten Bassett became a mass movement neither political nor a statement on war, but individualising each soldier's death has certainly worried those in Whitehall. The sense is that when everybody comes back and there's a ceremony for every single person, it looks as if there's another person dead in the service of the government. So it can have a, a downside in terms of public opinion's view of the whole operation. They're all General sense. Sir Mike Jackson has recently retired to Wiltshire he says Wooden Bassett has drawn a nation closer to its soldiers. What Wooden Bassett did was to focus, I think, uh, rather more sharply on uh, what the armed forces were doing and the risks they were taking. Through it all, Wooden Bassett has been about the fallen and their families. It is a very public place to mourn. But that helps. These are the parents of Major James Bowman, killed in Afghanistan last year. To go through Wooden Bassett was just an amazing experience. To have all those people who were there 
to pay their own respects to people they didn't know, to the families, to help. It was, without doubt, it was a comfort. It was a comfort to us. I think it's going to be very difficult to um, achieve the same sort of thing elsewhere. It's, um, uh, and we all know that it's moving to, to um, Bryce Norton. Um, I, I think that Wooten Bassett is, is unique. There will be more grief to come, more fallen to honour, as we ponder the future of repatriations post Wooten Bassett. Don't forget those whose job it is to soldier on.